It, it means a lot. I've spoken on a number of occasions recently highlighting that in 1998, I was 18. The Good Friday Agreement represented the very first time I cast my vote, and it was hugely significant that uh, the agreement was endorsed by such, um, by such huge numbers right across the island. I, I Obviously, as you've alluded to, I have a very distinct memory as to what like, life was like pre-1998. But 25 years on, I, I look at this city, particularly through the prism and through the eyes of my older two children, who are 19 and 20, and this is a completely different city, and, and that's something that we should celebrate. It's a completely different society that we have here now in, in the north, and the bedrock of that is the agreement that had parity of esteem mutual respect, human rights, power sharing at its heart. And that's why I think it is fitting that we do celebrate the progress that has been made in those 25 years. When, when we talk about the current frustration, and, and that's maybe too mild a word because I share it, um, th those who I speak to on a daily basis talk to me about cost of living. They talk to me about our health service that's in crisis more and more in recent times, the conditions that our public sector workers are, are having to work in and, and the pay that they do that work for. But, but I would remain optimistic for this reason. When, when we saw the election last year in May, a historic election that for the first time returned a Republican, a nationalist in, in the position of first minister, but the people voted overwhelmingly um, for parties to go back in and do their job. So there remains that commitment, I think, from the people to power sharing, to the institutions. And even if you go outside of party politics, you look at our sectors, our business sector is asking and demanding that the institutions are restored. The same with agriculture, the same with health, the same with the public sector. So there is an acceptance, I think, in, in, in the society today that not only do they recognise the need for power sharing, but they also understand the importance so that we can actually tackle the problems and parties can work together. Because that's the beauty of the Good Friday Agreement, is that when we see it work best, is when parties work together. Uh, since the election last May, Michelle O'Neill has been to the forefront of calling upon the DUP to take their place at the executive table, along with the other parties, so we could start to tackle the issues which Doug alluded to when he says that, that, that people are suffering, and it's not overly dramatic to put it in those terms because that is the case. We do need our structures up and running very quickly. And, and as you've touched on, the negotiations are over. I mean, that's, that, that's just a matter of political fact. And to expect for the people to suffer continuously uh, for a further period of time, to stay on the waiting list as the situation gets much worse for people, I don't think is fair. And I think rightfully has been interpreted as, as um, very punitive on people. But the conversation around unity, which you've touched on, I don't think is, is uh, something that necessarily is an, is an either or uh, around power sharing. We all know that, especially since 2016, that conversation is in a place that I don't think anybody has ever witnessed before in their lifetime. There are those that I talk to that still feel aggrieved that their full European rights and citizenship have been stripped from them in a very undemocratic way because of Brexit. And we know that the mm -hmm. pathway back to full European reintegration is in, within the, the, the model of constitutional change. So people are having this conversation. And, and what I find interesting about it is, is that it very rarely goes down to identity politics. I'll, I'll finish with this. People are asking about how we can have a better health system on the one island, how we can have a better education system, how we can increase and build prosperity and all of that weaves through the conversation on Irish unity and I do think that will be a significant change that we will see in years to come.